This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and it's Smackdown time again. Ready for back to school time or anything that you actually need to use your laptop for. In this case, I think this is something that people just don't do enough of. It's comparing the 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro with the 15 inch. They're both more powerful than average, certainly for their weight and class size, but how much power do you need? How much money do you have to spend? We're going to compare them now. So you've decided you want a Mac. You've decided you want a Retina display. I can't blame you because it really is a lot nicer than the non-Retina display option on portable Macs. But you can't decide between the 13 and the 15 inch because you know what? You decide you need more power. MacBook Air isn't quite enough for you, that sort of thing. Even for Windows Ultrabooks, the Core, Core i5 and i7 ULV CPUs that are lower wattage versus the 28 watt CPUs and better that are in here. But how do you decide between these two? Just how much power do you need? That's pretty much what this is about and the portability factor, which is more important than you might suspect. 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro, 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro, both 0.71 inches thick. Our 15-inch friend here is 4.46 pounds. Now for a powerhouse portable with a metal casing, both of these have the aluminum unibody casing on here, that's pretty darn light, but it is a pound heavier than the 13-inch model. And do you feel the difference in that? Well, I can tell you I do. Having schlepped this around to trade shows, 4.46 pounds is noticeable. When you're around three, three and a half like this, this is really an Ultrabook territory, which is pretty impressive for the power of the machine. It, not quite as heavy, and that leads into the power adapters. And here we have our power adapters. Look, the size isn't much different. The one that's slightly larger is the 85 watt power adapter for the 15 inch MacBook Pro. This one here is the 60 watt for the 13 inch. So in your bag, not much of a difference. But in terms of weight, this one's about twice as heavy as this one right here. So you're talking just under 12 ounces for this one. That is three quarters of a pound versus a little over six ounces for this one. So when you're talking total weight in your bag, yes, these guys have great battery life, but many of us do need to travel with our chargers there's a much more significant weight difference for the total weight right there for the entire package. And that's what you're going to feel if you're carrying this around from class to class all day, or if you're working, you got it on the road, you get the idea. So important point there. Next thing is price. We are not all so rich. 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro starts at $2,000, $1,999 US dollars. Our 13 inch starts at $1299, so call it $1300. $700 difference between these two. $700 is almost enough to get a Surface Pro 3 Core i5 tablet on the side. So that's a lot of money difference. For some of you, that's going to be the deciding factor right there. Now for your base stuff, what you get inside these though, that there's a difference. We'll get into the processor difference because that's a whole nother can of worms right there. But in terms of RAM and storage, with Apple's mid-2014 refresh of the 13-inch right here, we get 8 gigs of RAM standard. It used to start with 4 gigs. 8 gigs is nice. You're getting into power user territory. Since the RAM is soldered on on these, it's always good to have extra if you can afford it because, well, you can't upgrade it later. The 15-inch, you get 16 gigs of RAM standard now with it. So there's some of what your money's going towards. Also, and our big friend right here, starts with a 256 gig SSD in that base model. In the 13 inch you get 128 gig SSD. Also obviously the different size display panel, slightly higher resolution, no kidding right there. Not a huge, huge difference in resolution so that's not as much of a factor. What is important is Intel Iris graphics and here this Intel 5100 graphics versus Iris Pro 5200 noticeably faster and the base model has only your integrated graphics here, not the dedicated graphics that's switchable. You're going to have to pay $2,500 if you want the NVIDIA GT750M with 2 gigs of GDDR5 VRAM inside. So you're getting faster graphics in here too. Now, when comparing this to the MacBook Pro or any other Ultrabook on the market that has HD, say, 4400 graphics, and our MacBook Air gets up to HD 5000, which is even nicer. Still, faster graphics here, you're going to notice the difference. This is sort of like better than your Ultrabook on steroids. Also has a higher 28 watt CPU, like I mentioned. So it's faster than Ultrabooks in general. But this guy right here, this is a workstation. You would never guess it because it's so thin and relatively speaking so light. But on benchmarks, this scores almost as high as a iMac, a current generation iMac, a big old desktop kind of machine. So that's pretty impressive there. So if you, for those of you who are going to be doing hardcore work, here's the thing. Quad core, Intel core i7 CPUs in here versus i5 dual cores on the 13 inch. There is no quad core option 
for the 13 inch retina mac so those quad cores are going to come in handy for when you're doing things like processing video if you do a lot of hd full hd video editing it's going to be important if you're doing cad work then you're definitely going to want the one with the dedicated graphics as well but lots more processing power here now not everybody does that kind of stuff i don't mean those of you who shoot a nice video look what my dog did in the backyard and it was so darn cute and you make a video and i'm talking about that i'm talking about those of you who spend some serious quality time editing and producing full hd video encoding video all of that sort of thing those of you again who work on cad stuff those of you who are doing super heavy duty computational stuff number crunching type of things now the 13 inch is perfectly adequate and i'll tell you i was using a 15 inch myself as my desktop machine and because our video editor does all the video editing not me i don't have to worry about that kind of thing i switched to the 13 inch and i realized it had plenty enough processing power now this little guy right here has enough horsepower and oomph to drive a thunderbolt display no problem along with the internal panel no slowdown using photoshop cc the latest version on here dreamweaver for doing site editing stuff plenty of things encoding some video occasionally no problem it's not that bad for doing iMovie full HD video encoding but it's about 60% mm, of the speed of the 15 inch model so that gives you an idea of the difference now if you're just doing a video occasionally then that's fine you don't need all that kind of power but again for those of you who are doing a lot of video production obviously you're going to want the fastest thing you can possibly get and four cores makes quite the difference I don't do a lot of computational he computationally heavy stuff but for those of you who are studying programming I know a lot of you who are going into engineering now in your first couple of years studying engineering in school this is going to be fine this 13 inch right here that this full core i5 dual core in here clocked at 2.6 gigahertz that's a new base level that's plenty adequate however if you're a professional programmer i don't mean you're pro compiling some small programs for class but you're doing this actually for work maybe you're developing complex iphone applications stuff like that that having all those extra cores can really help i'm telling you if, you, if you're approaching hundreds of thousands of lines of code then you're going to notice the difference and you're going to want a more powerful machine otherwise again it's overkill you really don't need it in terms of ports the 13 inch really is a mini version of this if you take a look on the side right here you're going to have the same port selection on both of these models if i can stack them up so we can see that so you're getting the same selection you got your magsafe 2 connector right here you've got your two thunderbolt 2 ports usb 3.0 port and your combo audio jack and on the other end notice the difference in the footprint and the size of the machine by the way for portability sake while we're doing this so you can see which one's going to be a lot smaller in your backpack or your carry-on but again same ports right here another usb 3.0 port hdmi full-size port and a sd card slot supporting sdxc high capacity cards both of these have the same identical physical design right down to the unibody fairly sealed kind of finish right here there's a whole lot of pentalobe screws if you want to open up either of these you can again ram is soldered on board if you want to upgrade the pcie ssd drive that's about all you can do with both of these now taking a look inside obviously the same design right here the same excellent trackpad on both of these same backlit keyboard about the same amount of travel because well they're the same thickness so there's no more room in the 15 inch for deeper key travel because it's just as thin both excellent keyboards both excellent trackpads and particularly if you're running mac os when it comes to the trackpad because mac os's trackpad drivers are just awesome if you're switching over to windows they're not quite as impressive likewise goes for battery life by the way for those of you who think about boot camping actually booting into windows instead the drivers and the battery life mm, yeah, not so good if you're running parallels as a virtual machine where you can run a windows program in a window inside of mac os then that becomes less relevant so here we have a 13.3 inch display both of these are ips displays resolution on that is 2560 by 1600 on our 15.4 inch 15 inch retina macbook pro you go up to 2880 by 1800 so you're gaining about 200 pixels or so in each direction that's not a whole lot of difference both of these support obviously apple handles resolution scaling a lot better than windows nothing ever gets too teeny if you want to manually set the resolutions you can choose from five different resolutions the maximum resolution on the 13 inch is 1680 by 1050 and on the 15 inch 1920 by 1280 
So there you go. For those of you who want to set your display scan, scaling manually, which is what I have done here. I haven't gone all the way to the max because that's even a little bit teeny for me, but you get the idea. And there are third-party utilities if you want to expose even more resolutions. If you use Best for Retina, basically it's going to do display doubling, which I find things are a little too large, particularly on our 13-inch here where it becomes not so usable. Giant icons, really not making best use of screen real estate. Here, uh, best for retina works out pretty well, honestly, as a pixel doubling solution. So how about battery life? Now, Apple, usually their, their battery life claims for their phones, their tablets, and their laptops are pretty legitimate. They don't overclaim a whole lot. They claim nine hours for the 13 inch versus eight hours for the 15 inch. And that's running obviously on the integrated graphics, not running on the NVIDIA GT 750M graphics. In this case, I would say they're a little optimistic about the 15 inch. I find seven, seven and a half hours or so. And this is with the both set the same brightness, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turn on. And they claim nine hours for the 13 inch. I, it easily goes to 10 hours. If you have brightness set to about 200 nits or so, Wi-Fi on and active again, and that's doing productivity tasks, social networking, email, writing a Word document, that sort of thing. If you're encoding video or you're playing Diablo 3, well, obviously your battery life is going to be shorter. Both of these tend to be fairly quiet and cool machines. They do have metal bottoms. You can feel them get hot if you are, well, playing Diablo 3 or something like that, but neither of them gets alarmingly hot. And you know how Apple is with their fans if you've ever used a Mac laptop. They really hate to turn the fans on, so... They, they, they push that envelope as far as they can without letting things heat up too much internally. One design difference, obviously, is with these you get about the same size keyboard, but here you have room for the speakers. Yes, there is louder and fuller sound on the 15-inch. Now, 13-inch is no slouch. For a 13-inch laptop, it sounds remarkably good, but you're going to get more immersive audio on the 15-inch if you're not going to use external speakers on it. When it comes to something like gaming, if you get the $2,000 model that has the Intel Iris Pro graphics versus the, just the Intel Iris graphics here, you're still going to notice the difference. The Iris Pro is actually a pretty impressive adapter that's about equivalent to the NVIDIA GT640, if, if you go back just a little bit in time. So it, it's good enough, certainly, to play Diablo 3 at native resolution easily with better than 30 frames per second. With this guy right here, Diablo scales pretty well, so you can do that, but I would go down to medium versus high settings on this one. Now, it really gets interesting for you gamers and those of you who do want to dual boot into Windows when you play games or you just use Steam games on either platform. If you get this with the NVIDIA GT 750M, nice graphics adapter there. Granted, it's not Alienware level, but it's certainly enough for moderate gamers, not you real hardcore types, to really have an enjoyable experience. Most current games, modern 3D demanding games, are going to play pretty fluently, at least on medium settings on this, plugged in, running on the GT750M. If you drop down to the Iris Pro instead, you're probably going to have to go down to medium settings, generally speaking, on some games, dropping the resolution a bit too, something like Crisis 3, which is a real pig, for example. On our 13-inch, let's put it this way, it's a lot better than the MacBook Air, but it is no gaming rig. It's fine for something like, well, say, Civ 5, that kind of level of game. Uh, you could play easily Diablo 3, Left 4 Dead, if you're running onto Windows, for example, Left 4 Dead 2, you're playing those sort of games. Uh, you're just going to have to go with low and medium settings for some of the more demanding games. And the less demanding games, you can do medium settings. So there's the difference. If you're, if you're more of a serious gamer, you're definitely going to want the 15-inch. Both of these guys come with Mac OS X Mavericks in the iLive suite and also the iWork suite, so you're taking care of there. No difference in the software bundle whatsoever. When it comes to synthetic benchmark scores, like I said, the 15-inch is, oh, almost twice as fast as the 13-inch, depending on what you're measuring, particularly in graphics test. And something like Geekbench 3 that looks more at the processors, obviously you've got four cores going here, so the multi-core test is going to give you about twice the speed result and the 15 inch that you're going to get on the 13 inch. In terms of storage subsystem, you're looking at the same PCIe SSD drive, so part for the course, these are in even terms there. Again, it's really going to be more about the processing power and the graphics power that you need. If you want to go up a bit just to get, say, a 256 gig SSD, you can do that, and that's going to be $1,500 on your 13 inch. You can also custom order with the Core i7. It's still going to be a dual core. Like I said, there's no quad core option right there, whereas this is standard with the quad core. 2.2 gigahertz quad core is the base model right here, 2.6 gigahertz dual core, Core i5, on your 13 inch. And I 
can't say enough that for those of you who are just buying these for average use, that 13 inch is going to have plenty of juice for you. It's really more demanding users that need the 15 inch model. So that's the 13 versus the 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro 2014 edition. And you know what? Obviously, in this case, there is no winner. That's why Apple makes two different products for two different sets of needs. Do you need the really big display? Do you need the super duper processing power in here that rivals that of a, an iMac desktop computer? Or do you need something that is very powerful for its size and weight with an amazing display, but much more affordable. Only you know. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for reviews of both of these laptops, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.